Neanderthals. Okay? The Agagwes, the fourth kind, the pygmy kind, live in the jungles of the world. That jungle band that goes through South America, Central Africa, and Indonesia, that area. They, of the four, have reddish, russet-colored hair, like orangutans, which also live exclusively in jungles around the world. The others have dark browns and blacks, their body hair, covered with hair. Whenever anyone sees them, their characteristics are described consistently the same. Wherever in the world, whatever kind we're looking at, when the person sees it, and frequently this is some very, very isolated na native who doesn't even know that the rest of the world is out there, much less that these things are seen on other continents. And when they describe them, they always describe them the same way. They say, no forehead, huge brow ridges, big round deep set eyes, big flat nose, although this one isn't so big, but big flat nose up against their face, mouth sticking off their face, no chin, head tucked down into their torso, very long arms dangling around their knees, very thick, muscular, robust bodies, and covered with hair from head to toe. Now, take away the hair, and what did I just describe to you to a T? The prehumans. Am I right? You saw the, you saw the skeletons. You saw the bones. The prehumans. What does this lead us to believe? The prehumans are the hominoids. The hominoids are the prehumans. The prehumans are the prehominoids. It's their ancestors, not ours. It's clear to anybody that will look at the evidence. The so-called prehumans are, in fact, prehominoids. Now, it's easy for me to stand up here and say this. What's the proof? Well, let's start right here with their feet. They leave tracks. All around the world, they leave tracks. We have upwards of 10,000 or more photographed, plaster-casted, or both. No question about it. And guess what? They're all fakes. All of them, every one of them is a fake. <laughs> Problem being, it's not that they are really, in fact, fakes. They just can't be real. They can't be real because not only is Darwin a blowed up pecker wood, all of his followers are. <laughs> and they don't want to be that. So these cannot be real, even though they are. Now, is, is it possible that they could all be fakes? All these tracks could be fakes? Could they fool everybody? No. Why? Because we know a lot about it. Let's take a look. There's a science called ichnology. And what, this, what an ichnologist does is he studies the tracks left in fossils by creatures going millions of years back. Show them a fossil, they can look at a print or a track or anything. They can tell you what made it. There's a whole science to it. If you go back into prehistory, all of our primitive tribes, the one thing, the one thing you had to pass on to your children was how to read the tracks in the area and know what they were so that they could feed their family out of the environment and so they could keep from feeding some wild animal's family. Very important. If you took everything we knew about, remember Tonto and those Indians, boy, they could just smell a track and tell you 20 things about what made it. We know about tracks. And this is two of the basic things we know. That when any living fleshy foot, like a human foot or a hominoid foot or even a camel pad, it doesn't matter, makes a track, puts a track down, the subtle interaction of bones in the foot, in our case it's 26 bones, 33 joints, dozens of muscles, ligaments, and tendons, makes a very subtle movement and, and lays it down in a very specific way from the midline out, and so it leaves a distinctive print with little lines in here called compression lines. Next slide. When you do it with a fake foot, you, can't, you don't get that, that subtlety of movement because there's no sequential parts to a, a fake foot. If, you, if you're missing a foot and you need a prosthesis, you're going to get just a dull stiff foot. We cannot duplicate anything even close to it. Even, anything even close to a real foot. So whether this is plaster or rubber or plastic or wood, it doesn't matter if you're making a fake foot, it's going to be of a piece and so when you put it down into the medium you have to stamp it or press it as a whole and in doing so you get a very distinctive look to that and it's a little ridge here with cracks on the top and the outside called, that's an impact ridge. So we have compression lines and impact ridges. Now, I can give this little lesson to a class of first graders, lay down a bunch of tracks here, real and fake, 
Give them a magnifying glass and they will not miss one. They will not miss one. Now, forest rangers that make their living out telling you, you know, bear, elk, zebra, what, it doesn't matter. Whatever it is, they can tell you what it is. And no anthropologist will question their expertise. But if they see a hominoid track and they say, oh boy, that looks real to me too, the anthropologist say, well, you don't know what you're talking about there. You don't know what you're talking about there. That one's fake. You're wrong there. See how absurd it is? And for the most part, you believe it because you don't expect them to lie to you. You don't expect them to have an agenda that they're maintaining. But they do and they do. And keep it in mind. Okay, next slide. All right, this is the way a human foot works. Looks and works. This is, of course, a, a, a good foot, not a flat foot. This is a typical human foot with an arch. When we come down on our heel, we have to swing our momentum around the arch, then cut it over into the ball, which will regenerate some of the lost momentum, and then we come out thrusting off of our big toe. That's how we walk. Our smaller toes pull up and act as balancers. If you notice your feet tonight when you walk around, notice how that works. Your big toe will go down, your other toes, toes will pull up, and it will leave in making a medium, an undisturbed ridge of medium here, in making a track rather, an undisturbed ridge of medium right here, but this of course will be squashed. Very distinctive print, no question about it. Now guess what? We walk badly, badly. When you do time and motion studies of us walking, we're, we're keeling around as we're swinging our momentum through our feet. We're locking our knees. We're basically throwing ourselves through our hips. Whoever do, That's why our joints wear out as we age. Our knees and our hips, we're using them badly. We walk badly. Whoever designed us needed to go back to the drawing board a couple of times more. They got lazy. It was a mistake. Okay. With that in mind, next slide. Let's take a look at a hominoid track, typical hominoid track. This is Bigfoot, 16 inches long, but taken in that really nice powdery dirt you get at the end of a hot summer, so it's a very clear, distinct print. Notice, if you will, the differences. We have a midline about right here, ankle shifted very far forward, heel extended back here and very much widened, forefoot shortened very much and widened, all five toes looking about the same shape, ironically, square, and all five toes acting as balancers because you have medium all the way through here. So you're getting the forefoot thrust coming out completely of the ball area, which is dented in, and it's like a two-part motion, sort of. So they have a completely different foot. It's a completely redesigned foot. Why? Completely redesigned creature. Much bulkier, much heavier, much denser, much more robust. So you need a different kind of foot. No arch is going to support that kind of weight, so you have no arch. Now the funny thing about most real, quote, fake tracks is that the local yokels who make them make big human footprints and go out stamping those around. So you know, immediately, they don't even have sense enough to know you've got to do it, you know, make a completely different foot. But the main thing to notice here is Remember, in our motion, we walk here, we go here, we do this, we do this, and we're very awkward. Look at the line of thrust here. Straight shot. What does this tell us? He walks right. He does it better than us. He does it the way it's supposed to be done, he or she. Does it the way it's supposed to be done. Isn't that interesting? Next slide. Okay, this is something else that the best hominoid tracks have. Dermal ridges. Now it's kind of hard to see, but dermal ridges are your fingerprints on your feet. Fingerprints on your feet. This is why they take a baby's footprint when it's born. Fingers too small to deal with, just stick its foot on. Same thing. Individual, unique. Dermal ridges. And there you s Oh, I think my battery's running out. Oh, no. No, when I put it down here, it goes out. I may need a replacement part here if anybody's got one. Yeah, I know, but it, I think it's just because I shook the battery a little bit. All right, anyway, point is that whoever is making, whoever's faking these things out around the world, thousands of them, is taking the trouble to make articulating feet that if they would just put on the market, they could make a fortune in the prosthetics industry. And then they're taking the trouble to inside.